Hello everyone and this is going to be a simple tutorial on how to offset animations. So this can be applied to animations that you've done inside Houdini or even if you've imported something from some other software. So let's say in this example uh, I've animated like a, a box which is doing this and let's say you have like you've imported it from another software and you have like these seven boxes which are just doing this animation and what I would like to do is I would like to offset each uh, each box so the animation will start at a different time frame okay so uh, what you need first of all is you need to generate a value for each individual object so to do that you can just take a connectivity node and a connectivity node will generate an attribute based on all the objects that are connected so you can set it at a point level or a primitive level and it will it can either generate a integer attribute or a string in our case an integer is fine and i'll just call it index and so you'll notice like uh, if you visualize the index value it will show you you know those values if you want to visualize the number we can take a visualize attribute node and we can just set this to uh, the attribute to index and we can set this to marker and there you go so you have you know you can see the values so now once we've done this I also just want to give it some color so that I'll just be able to see you know which object is where so I can take a simple color node and what I can do is I can just set this to uh, I can set this to primitive and do uh, random from attribute and the attribute will be index so there you go so you can you know each individual object based on the index value gets a different color yeah so we can just define you can also do like ramp from attribute you know like that's also fine but i think this should go from zero to six yeah so we can do this as well okay so now uh, how do we do this okay so the idea is we will have to go through a for each but it's a slightly longer process so the first most important thing is in order to offset animations you need a time shift node okay so take a time shift and it's really simple right like if by default it uses like a dollar f which is like you know the frame value and it is just giving you the animation if i subtract it by any value the animation will offset by those many frames so if i do minus five now your animation won't start till five okay if i do minus 50 then the animation won't start till 50. so what we want to do is we would like to uh, subtracted by the index value okay so this is zero so this is start at zero and this is one and two and three so we'll start at whatever is the index value that becomes the frame number so how do we do that so what we need to do is we're going to do we're going to copy it and then uh, put it through a for each and then use the index value to do uh, modify this time shift now you can't do it inside the forage because inside the forage the animation doesn't work okay so you have to do it externally so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a line and this is seven objects right so this is seven objects so we'll give it seven points over here and this doesn't need to have any height so you can just make it zero okay now because you have like the connectivity value here called index the same value needs to apply here so I can just take an enumerate node which will just record or which will just take the point number and store it as an index value. So we have our point numbers going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and the, this will just store that. So what you want to do is just set the group type to points and it will just store it in the index value. If you want to see it, you can see it here. You can do split plane left, right and check out the geometry spreadsheet and there you go. So you have like the point number stored within the index value. Now, if I take a copy to points and if I copy this, okay, like it's copying all of it. But if we set the piece attribute and call it index, then you'll notice that it is copying each index value to its relevant point number. All you have to do is just take this length and make it zero. So what you're getting is the same thing, but now they've been split up into, you know, like individual objects. Now, how do we offset the animation? Because it has, we, we want to be able to treat each individual object. So it's simple, you put it through a for each. Okay, so just take a for each point and this comes in here, that goes out there. 
Okay, and this is fine. So now what happens is that within the for each, we can take this enumerate value and use that to offset our time shift. Uh, I have a for each uh, lesson. I have like three, four for each lessons. So you can also go through those, but we're effectively doing the same thing. Okay, so just take the for each. I'll just name it something shorter because I hate this for each underscore begin whatever. So I'll just call it like for each C and the rest is pretty simple. Okay, just come into the time shift and we need to bring in this, uh, the enumerate value or the index value that exists here into the time shift. And the way to do that is with a point function. So we take the dollar F and we subtract it with a point function and the point function will need to call the point value that is in here. Okay, so we need to come into the for each C and the point number is zero because inside the for each only one point exists. The value we want is index and because it's a float value, like it's not a vector or anything, we're just taking in zero. Okay, so like, so like if, it's a, if it's a color value, if it's RGB, and let's say you want to access green, then it will be RGB, so it will be 0, 1, 2. So green will be 1. So you kind of go that way. But this is index is just a single value. So we just do 0. And that's pretty much it. So if I press play, you get this. And then whatever value you multiply in here, like if you just take all of this and let's say we multiply it by 5. So then you'll get a much larger offset, see. Anyway, so that's pretty much, you can apply this to anything you want. Okay, so whether it's imported data or alembic objects or, uh, you know, whatever, you animated something inside Houdini, anything is fine. Yeah, so that's pretty much it.